Hi Aisha, hi Sarah. Um, so this is Monday, so I haven't actually seen your video yet, Sarah. I'm very sorry, but I'm busy this week, so it's got to be Monday. Um, so I'm sure you've told everything already to everyone, so we all understand. Um, so I'm going to jump straight in. Okay, so I thought I'd introduce myself, particularly to you, Aisha, since we know each other not as well um, as Sarah and I do, which is understandable, given that Sarah and I have known each other since we're five. Seriously, Sarah, we need to just... You know, spend some time apart, maybe. I'm kidding. Man, I love you. Um, so Aisha, I, I am studying geology, which is actually exciting. It it really is. I swear. We're not all nerds. Okay, let's face it, we are not we are all nerds. Um, as proven by my lecturers, uh, in, in the subject titles of the three subjects I'm doing this semester. So currently I'm doing geodynamics, geochemistry, and Geobiology. They do, they just they just want to put geo in front of everything, and to a, an absurd level. For example, I was reading an article today about rocks. Okay, this article was in the Journal of Geology. It was written for and by people who understand rocks pretty well, right? And yet, I found words like geosynclinal and geochronology, geodating. Really? <laughs> I think we understand. Just saying. Um, but really, let's face it, geologists love puns. You know, they're just the schist, really. <laughs> I can't resist that one every time. So great. Um, I think my favourite, which I found on a shirt, on a, uh, you know, one of those websites where they have shirt slogans, uh, was, and it's a bit rude, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it goes, I'll show you my cleavage if I can test your hardest. Oh, uh, just, yeah, that, that brought a blush to all of my geology friends' cheeks, really. Um, but, okay, so these are the tools of my trade. Okay, so this is a rock hammer, or a deadly weapon, whichever one you want to call it. Um, I think my favourite story about a rock hammer is my friend can't keep her rock hammer anywhere but in a suitcase which is locked and under her bed. Her mum refuses to let her keep it anywhere else, just in case, and this is the best part, a robber comes into their house and uses the geology hammer against them. Now, personally, this is why I keep my geology hammer next to my bed, just in case a robber comes into the house. I don't know, I think if I come screaming at him with this, he might run away. Just, just you know, or at the very least, I'll actually hit him with it. That, that, that'd be okay as well, really, in my books, um, but good for bashing things, you know, rocks mostly, but the occasional robber, you know, if, if the uh, situation arises. Uh, and the other one is this compass, which is hi very high-tech, you know, it, it's got things and bits and turning, it, yeah, but I don't, I don't know what the mirror is for. Um, I've always used it to check, you know, um, my lip balm, you know, that's, that's pretty much all, you know, check if my hair's okay in the field. Um, can't think of any other use for it. Uh, also, my favourite rock is this one. It's got a fossil in it. Um, I can't remember what the fossil is. It's a uh, brachiopod maybe? I don't know. I'll look it up and maybe put it in the description if I can be bothered. Um, but it was great because it was just lying on the ground, as you do, um, and I was with a group of, there was a group of four of us and we tried to find one of these for everyone. We managed to find three pretty giant... These are huge, by the way. This is a big fossil in undergrad terms. And we, tr we found three of them. Unfortunately, the fourth member of our group didn't get one. I think it was Nick. I'm sorry, Nick. Um, but, you know, rocks don't have to just be used for, you know, just scientific or building or any of those ordinary sort of things. No, no, no. This rock, for example, was used to bribe me to a meeting. And it worked, because I went to that meeting. Um, also, just in case you run out of paper, you know, just, just pick up a rock, you know? It works just as well. Um, and, and then if you need more space, you just turn the rock over, and you're good. So yes, m rocks are very useful and purposeful. Which brings me on... In, in my mind, don't worry about the connection, you'll just, I can't explain it. But last night there was in fact a program about Australian geology on the ABC, and I kid you not, it's called The Time Traveller's Guide, which I thought was great given that we're almost time travel. 
So it's on ABC at the moment and it's great. It actually is like sort of David Attenborough end of the documentary scale in terms of quality. So it's it'd probably be on iView if you if you missed it. I'm just I'm just saying. It's great. Um and I thought I'd finish off um by firstly firstly, how are you guys? Seriously. It's been so long. <laughs> Since last Friday. Um you know, so tell me in your videos. That would be great. Um, and then this quote from a guy named Richard Fortley who wrote a book about geology, which I have read, of course. Um, and so the background to this quote is that he is in Durness in Scotland, I believe it is, um, and it's raining a lot. Um, so he's found a little bit of a cliff with some plants and, and is just trying to hide from the rain. And he goes like this. You can make such observations fiddling with sundews while you're passing the time thinking up reasons not to go out in the torrent again and wondering if perhaps a career in banking might not, after all, have its attractions. But then, a few days later, the rain stopped and Durness was the best place in the world to be. Gifted with golden beaches and that startling clarity of light that follows rain, suddenly to be a geologist was the only thing. I agree, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Who is the organic? The It'll be the, the lowermost stuff before you get to the ironing. It'll be this grey stuff where there's no more sulfate. So